Hello and good morning! Welcome back to our virtual class! How are you? I hope that everyone is safe and well. Thanks so much for joining me today as we explore our wonderful world using the English language. I'm Sir Len Eriklo, your English Line teacher, discussant, and co-adventurer. As we take a journey through Anglo-American literature, I'm pretty sure you will learn new things which can apply in the real world outside the classroom. Last quarter, you learned how to judge the relevance and worth of information and ideas and validity of the evidence, especially among materials viewed. It's an extremely important 21st century skill because there is so much fake news around us, especially in social media. Let's have a quick look back on that lesson through a short review of concepts. Fake news refers to false or misleading information which masquerades as legitimate news. How to identify fake news? Number 1. Check the source. Check the web address for the page you're looking at. Number 2. Check the author. Research them to see if they are credible or if they have a good reputation. Number 3. Check other sources. Are other reputable news or media outlets reporting on the story? Are credible sources cited within the story? Number 4. Check the facts. Credible news stories will include plenty of facts, data, statistics, quotes from experts, and so on. Number 5. Maintain a critical mindset. A lot of fake news is cleverly written to provoke strong emotional reactions such as fear or anger. Traditionally, there are four macro skills in English, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. There's a fifth macro skill, and it's called viewing. According to the Canadian Common Curriculum Framework, viewing is an active process of attending and comprehending visual media such as television, advertising images, films, diagrams, symbols, photographs, videos, drama, drawings, sculpture, and paintings. Thus, viewing is about reading, analyzing, evaluating, and appreciating visual texts. Viewing is an active process. It's important that you understand that effective active viewers engage in the following viewing process. Number one, pre-viewing. Number two, during viewing. And number three, after viewing or responding. In previewing, the teacher prepares the students by activating their schema or the prior knowledge they bring to the study of a topic or theme, anticipating a message, predicting, speculating, asking questions, and setting a purpose for viewing. During viewing, students view the visual text to understand the message by seeking and checking understanding, by making connections, making and confirming predictions and inferences, interpreting and summarizing, pausing and reviewing, and analyzing and evaluating. In after viewing or responding, students are given opportunities to respond personally, critically, and creatively to visual texts. Students respond by reflecting, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Your English teachers actually follow and apply this procedure in the viewing process in class. Our vocabulary booster for today is the word relevance. According to Oxford Learner's Dictionary, the word relevance is an uncountable noun. Relevance means a close connection with the subject you are discussing or the situation you are in. Relevance also means the fact of being valuable and useful to people in their lives and work. Let's use the word relevance in a sentence. Number 1. I don't see the relevance of your question. 
Number two, what he said has no direct relevance to the matter in hand. Let's start the ball rolling in discussing this week's lesson. The most essential learning competency is judge the relevance and worth of ideas, soundness of author's reasoning, and the effectiveness of the presentation. Here are the objectives. Number one, take a stand on critical issues brought up in the material viewed. Number two, judge the relevance and truthfulness of the ideas listened to. And number three, judge the validity of the evidence listened to. Let's take a look and analyze the editorial cartoons. Directions. Analyze the editorial cartoons and decide whether you will be in favor or against a particular issue being raised. Be guided by the following questions. Number one, what is your stand? Number two, what did you use as a basis in decision making? You can also write your answers in your English study notebook. Let's go back to the editorial cartoons. What is your stand? Are you for or against materialism? Are you for or against fake news? What did you use as basis in decision making? Kindly key in your answers in the message box. The importance of opinion. An opinion is a judgment or a view formed about something not necessarily based on facts or knowledge. Expressing your opinion is one of the ways to make society progress. Opinions are important in igniting change. Expressing an opinion is part of freedom of expression. Thank you for analyzing the editorial cartoons. Looking back at the first editorial cartoon, if you are against materialism, it might be because materialism leads to corruption, not only physically but also mentally and socially. Materialism can lead to depression and anxiety, leading to social and self-destruction. If you are against fake news, it might be because fake news literally means false or misleading information. Fake news can damage the reputation of a person, a family, or an organization. We must be very critical in judging information. It must be factual and supported by evidence. You guys did a fantastic job in analyzing the editorial cartoons and in taking a stand. Let us now discuss today's lesson with focus on listening. Judging the relevance, truthfulness of the ideas, and validity of the evidence listened to. What is listening? Is it an active skill or a passive skill? According to Noonan, listening is a Cinderella skill because it is overlooked by its elder sister speaking in language learning. Actually, listening is an active skill. According to Helgeson, listening is an active, purposeful process of making sense of what we hear. Listening and hearing are considered different processes. While hearing is considered as a physical, passive, and natural process, listening is a physical and mental, active, and learned process and is defined as a skill. There are three stages in listening, pre-listening, while listening, and post-listening. Pre-listening activities help to hear and give some clues about the activity expectations, mostly by activating schemata. While listening activities are directly related to the listening text, and you students perform the task either during the listening process or immediately after the listening. In the post-listening stage, you students work in detail applying both top-down and bottom-up strategies to link up the classroom activities and their real lives. An example of this is summarizing, discussions, creative responses, etc. At this juncture, we are in the pre-listening stage of our lesson. Let's now move forward. So how do we become active listeners? We must use whole body listening. 
eyes looking toward the speaker, both ears ready to hear, mouth quiet and ready for your turn to talk, hands quiet and kept to yourself, feet quiet and still, body facing toward the speaker, brain thinking about what is being said, and the heart considers the speaker and others listening. How do we determine if the information we listen to is true and valid? Validity is based on truth or reason, the quality of being logically and factually sound and acceptable. Evidence is any information to prove something is true or valid. In determining the validity of the text listened to, the text must meet the following criteria. True, reasonable, logical, can be supported by evidence, and has no bias. The evidence, on the other hand, must contain information that supports a claim. In judging the relevance of the information listened to, all ideas must be related to the main point. Relevance is the quality or state of being closely connected or appropriate. It is the degree to which something is related or useful to what is happening or being talked about. A good paragraph contains sentences that are relevant to the main idea or point. Listen to the following texts and judge if the evidence is valid or not valid in proving a claim. The text will also be shown so as to be more inclusive, especially to learners experiencing audio issues or who are hearing impaired. Directions Listen to the text. Distinguish valid and non-valid evidence in supporting a claim. One, regularly eating a healthy breakfast helps us pay attention, remember, and perform better. Children and teens concentrate better at school, get higher scores on tests, and are less likely to be tardy or miss school days. Potato chips, french fries, candies, and soft drinks are breakfast foods for children and teens. Time is up. Thank you for answering. If your answer is non-valid, that's fantastic! Research points to the fact that students who start their day with a healthy breakfast have more energy, perform better academically, and make healthier eating choices throughout the day. Junk food like potato chips, french fries, candies, and soft drinks for breakfast, on the other hand, are never healthy at all. It leads to long-term health problems such as obesity, accompanying emotional and self-esteem problems like depression and chronic illnesses in later life. Depression, in turn, affects growth and development parameters, academic performance, and social relationships. 2. You can get a face mask exemption card, so you don't need to wear a mask. This card ensures that you can go out without wearing a face mask. Time is up! Thank you for answering! If your answer is non-valid, that's wonderful! According to studies, wearing masks lowers the chance of transmission by up to 85%, while maintaining a physical distance of 1 meter reduces the risk of transmission by 80%. Face mask exempt cards is fake news. Three, you can protect yourself from COVID-19 by injecting, swallowing, bathing in, or rubbing onto your body bleach, disinfectants or rubbing alcohols. We can kill COVID-19 inside our body with bleach, disinfectants, or rubbing alcohol even without being inoculated by COVID-19 vaccine. Time is up! Thank you for answering! If your answer is non-valid, that's awesome! Spraying alcohol or chlorine on your body won't kill viruses that have entered your body. These substances also can harm your eyes, mouth, and clothes. 
When applied to surfaces, disinfectants can help kill germs such as the COVID-19 virus. However, don't use disinfectants on your body. Inject them into your body or swallow them. Disinfectants can irritate the skin and can be toxic if swallowed or injected into the body. Also, don't wash produce with disinfectants. Drinking alcohol does not protect you against COVID-19 and can be dangerous. The harmful use of alcohol increases your risk of health problems. 4. A vaccine to prevent COVID-19 is available. COVID-19 vaccines have been authorized by the Philippine Food and Drug Administration (FDA), and vaccine programs are being carried out across the country. Time is up. Thank you for answering. If your answer is valid, that's brilliant. Vaccines save millions of lives each year. Vaccines work by training and preparing the body's natural defenses, the immune system, to recognize and fight off the viruses and bacteria they target. After vaccination, if the body is later exposed to those disease-causing germs, the body is immediately ready to destroy them, preventing illness. Here are the COVID-19 vaccines approved by the World Health Organization. You would also notice that the claims were either validated or refuted by using reliable sources of information like the Department of Health, the World Health Organization, and health experts. Let's have another listening activity on judging the relevance of ideas. Directions. In the following listening texts, one or more of the sentences may be irrelevant. Write the sentences you should get rid of. The text will also be shown so as to be more inclusive, especially to learners experiencing audio issues or who are hearing impaired. You might also want to turn on closed caption or subtitle in your device. 1. Exercise is really good for one's physical and mental health. It is proven that aerobic exercise is good for the heart, which is very important to overall health. I used to run every day, but now I go to dance classes to get my aerobic exercise. Strength training is important for maintaining muscle mass and improving bone density. Both muscle mass and bone density can decrease as we age, so improving them through strength training is important. My grandmother broke a hip last year because her bones were so fragile. All kinds of exercises have been shown to relieve depression, anxiety, and stress. Signs up, thank you for answering. You are correct. The sentences that you should get rid of are the following. I used to run every day, but now I go to dance classes to get my aerobic exercise. And my grandmother broke a hip last year because her bones were so fragile. These two sentences are not related to the main idea which is exercise is really good for one's physical and mental health. 2. Change is the only certainty is a popular but erroneous catchphrase. The changes in medicine over the last century have indeed been dramatic, but what actually changed? We are facing many ethical dilemmas today. Although more conditions can be effectively treated than before, many diseases are hardly ever cured, and the maximum length of life has not increased since the days of Noah. We have made advances in the medical field. Physical death always wins in the end as it has done since the beginning of time. Time's up! Thank you for answering. That's right. The sentences that you should get rid of are the following. We are facing many ethical dilemmas today. And we have made advances in the medical field. These two sentences are not related to the main idea. Great job, everybody! The two listening activities, valid or not, and judging the relevance of ideas, highlighted the importance of developing your active listening comprehension skills. Let us now have a recap of today's lesson. 
Expressing our opinion must be within the bounds and limitations of freedom of speech. Harlan Ellison once said, You are not entitled to your opinion. You are entitled to your informed opinion. No one is entitled to be ignorant. According to Alfred George Gardner and his work Pebbles on the Seashore, a person's freedom ends where another man's freedom begins. Your freedom ends when mine starts. You can have any belief or opinion you want, but if it cuts the freedom of other people in the process, that's a problem. Listening is the ability to accurately receive and interpret messages in the communication process. Listening is key to all effective communication. According to Helgeson, listening is an active, purposeful process of making sense of what we hear. We must use whole body listening to become active listeners. It is closely related to attention. One must have a good listening attention in order to learn and process information. In judging the relevance, truthfulness of the ideas, and validity of the evidence listened to, it is important to note that all supporting details are connected to the main idea. All claims must likewise be supported by evidence. To understand the validity of the evidence listened to, the text must meet the following criteria. True, reasonable, logical, can be supported by evidence, and has no bias. We live in a world where fake news is being propagated as real news. Therefore, we must be very critical of the information that we listen to. It is up to us to verify the validity of information that we hear. According to Brian Tracy, you can judge the validity of any idea or concept by asking, Is this true for me? Let us all continue being active listeners, vigilant and critical with the information we listen to. After all, active listening is an essential skill which you greatly need every day and in the 21st century and beyond. That ends our lesson today in judging the relevance, truthfulness of the ideas, and validity of the evidence listened to. All of you were amazing in answering our learning activities. Stay tuned with us next week as we learn about judging the worth of ideas, soundness of author's reasoning, and the effectiveness of the presentation with Miss Kenny Gonzalez. This is Sir Lem and let's continue to explore our wonderful world as we take a journey through Anglo-American literature. Take good care of yourselves. Stay safe always. Bye!